What did she say? She said, just get on with it. I'll go and change out of that comedy costume, Paul. OK. <laughs> OK. I've had a letter here from Rachel Breeze in Cheltenham. <laughs> and Rachel says, dear Mr. Barker, how do they make bubble wrap? Uh, because none of my family or friends know. Uh, Miss Chicken, what are you doing? <laughs> You're a test chicken, I see. And uh, do you know the answer to Rachel's question? You know how to make bubble wrap sound like gunfire. Very good. How do you do that? Okay, Miss Chicken! Oh, oh, Miss Chicken! What are you doing? Please keep... Uh, Paul, please tell us about rapping! Certainly. It's rhymes put to a basic hip-hop beat. It originated in America in the early 1970s. And... Uh, not rap! Bubble wrap! Oh! <laughs> Right. This is how it's done. A tanker comes to the factory with 20 tonnes, that's the equivalent of, ooh, 10 big lordy hippos, of low-density polyethylene. Which is a posh way of saying little plastic balls. These pipes act like giant straws. They suck the plastic balls from the tanks and into these machines here. You can see coming down the transparent pipe there. They installed that especially for us. <laughs> Showbiz. The pipes are connected to this blender, which mix the new plastic balls with old recycled plastic balls. Environmentally friendly as well. Once mixed, they're loaded into this funnel and gravity pulls them into the machine. Inside, there is a revolving screw, and as the plastic balls move along, the screw gets bigger, forcing the balls against the edge of the barrel, which both puts pressure on them and forces them nearer the heaters. The heat increases to 100 degrees Celsius. The plastic balls melt, and the liquid plastic is divided into two tubes. The first tube is poured onto this, a moulding roller. The lava flows across these holes and is sucked in by a vacuum. Not a vacuum cleaner, a vacuum, which is basically a space without any air. Once the liquid plastic is sucked into the roller, it is cooled by the water inside. As that layer comes off the roller, a second stream of lava is poured over the top of it. This creates a flat piece of plastic which seals the vacuum and makes the bubbles that we're all used to. The bubble wrap is now ready for you to use at home. You can wrap a delicate present in it, or just pop it. Oh, I love that. Or what about this for an idea? Today, Bombardier Beatles, baffling, banging, bottom bomb. Welcome to W.O.W. Weird or What? A look at some of the strangest sights from the natural world. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, where was I? Oh, yes, uh, let's go over to our intrepid reporter on the field. It's Mr. Barker. Oh, uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Andy. Just count yourself lucky that you didn't come across one of these Bombardier Beetle chappies. They have a secret weapon to stop them from becoming a tasty beetle burger to any peckish passing wolf spiders. And there's a little beetle snaffling around, having a little walk, doing whatever beetles do. I don't know. Uh, but when he's attacked, he fires a little bomb of hot chemicals out of his bottom. <laughs> Woo! -hoo, there he goes. <laughs> no sniggering at the back now, because this is not a laughing matter for the wolf spiders hates the peppery hot beetle juice, which is like hotter than the hottest curry and tastes disgusting. Hmm. Now, take an ultra-close view of the bombardier beetle's bottom in slowed-down action. <laughs> it's a bit like a water pistol, isn't it? <laughs> so, that's the hotty body of the beetle. Back to Paulie Wally in the studio. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mr. Barker. That's all from this week's Weird or What? <laughs> Here's a good letter, Mr. B. It's from Nathaniel Kendrick, age six, from Ooh. Windermere. Hello. And it says, Dear Mr. Parker, mm -hmm. when did people start using forks and who invented them? Oh, uh, well, Nathaniel, no one knows exactly, but forks caused a bit of a hoo-ha when they first appeared about 400 years ago. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah, hoo ha. That's like a big fuss. Uh, go and get into that comedy oh. costume, Paul. Okay. <laughs> Fox oh. has an everyday item were brought from Italy, and people didn't like them. Can you believe it? For example, the haberdashers. <laughs> Oh, uh, a haberdasher is someone who sells cloth and stuff for sewing and mending, Miss Chick Chick. Mm. Uh, so, why didn't the haberdashers like forks? Over to Mrs. Elsie Ooh. Marchant, a haberdasher from the year 1611. Oh, that's right, Mr. Parker. I don't like the look of all these new fangled Ooh. fork things. They make eating a lot tidier. I preferred it when people spilled their food all over the place. Then they'd come to me for their tablecloths, <laughs> napkins Ooh. and squirrels. Yeah. Squirrels? No, I lied about the squirrels. Yeah. So you'd rather go to dinner with people who used their fingers and made a mess everywhere, Ooh. then? That's right, Mr Bonker. Yeah, it's Barker and you're barking. Yeah. It seems crazy, but the haberdashers at least were trying to make money selling napkins. Yeah. Some people just thought that forks were a ridiculous yeah. foreign fashion. Uh, one man called Thomas Corriat... Yeah. Oh, well, just follow me, Miss Chick Chick. Yeah. Yep. Ah, good evening, guests. Uh, just before you start your food, I have a little something to show you. Something a little bit new. Something a little bit special. Forks! Take a look at them in action. You just put your food on the end of the fork, and then you put it in your mouth. <laughs> Welcome to this new world of metal brilliance. <laughs> what, are you, what are you laughing at? I can't believe it. What are the forks? They're so good. Oh. <laughs> So when did forks eventually catch on then, Mr B? Well, Polly, eventually when forks were used to help hold the Sunday roast down while they were being carved, people saw them and said, Oh, look, a big prongy thing. I wish I had a little one when I'm eating my dinner. <laughs> and they were ridiculous no more, and forks became a part of everyday life. <laughs> oh, no, she's got the plonker thing. Oh, no, that means it must be time for... Bong the gong. Welcome along to... Bong the Gong! Yes, it's the game show where each week a different school challenges the brain of Barker with their quick-fire questions. And today's school is Hillhead Primary School in Glasgow! Hi, Mr Barker! Uh, hello to you, my Scottish chums. And remember, if Mr Barker gets any questions wrong, then the Jenny Powell of the poultry world, <laughs> Miss Chicken, will bong that gong! Ooh. Looking hot, Miss Chicken! <laughs> How are you feeling there, Mr B? A brainy is a brainy thing, Mr H. Let's move on, then. Could we okay, have the first okay. question, please, oh, yeah. from Murray? Dear Mr Barker, what is the name of the big river that runs through Glasgow? Oh, oh. the big river that runs through Glasgow. It's getting you, Clive. Oh. Clyde, the Clyde! Is the correct answer. <laughs> Could we have the next question, please, from oh, yes. Humera? What's Spanish money called? Oh, Spanish money. Uh, in Spanish money. It sounds like potato, but it's actually a peseta. Little bit of a rhyme there. Well done, <laughs> Mr. B. Could we have the next question, please, from Annam? Oh, yeah. Who wrote James and the Giant Peach? Oh, James and the Giant Peach. That's one of my favourite books. Um, who wrote it? Roald Dahl. Correct answer, Mr. Barker. Next question, please, from oh, yeah. Angelica. Hmm. Which loch in Scotland is supposed to have a monster in it? Oh, the oh. monster loch with the monster. That'll be the Loch Ness Monster. Well done, Mr B. Yes. And the final question, please, from James. Okay. What's the biggest bone in your body? Oh, bones, bones. It's almost tea time, lovely yeah, bones. Mr B, we're doing a quiz here. Oh, oh, is this the femur or the thigh bone? Is the correct yes. answer. Yes. There goes the hooter. Mr B, you've scored five yeah. out of five. I'm afraid, Hillhead, you didn't oh. beat the brain of Barker. Oh. Oh. Better luck next time. Hey, Mr. B, you've got the greatest brain in Britain. I knew that, Mr. Hindi, I knew that. That's it for today. Bong the gong. Now it's your chance to win our talking globe and learn all about the world. And the question is out of this world. Yes, can you find out which planet is famous for its rings? Oh. Is it A, Mars, B, Jupiter, or C, Saturn? Uh, which planet is famous for its rings? Is it A, Mars, B, Jupiter, or C, Saturn? Just call this number and leave your answer. 0891 22 That's 0891 22 Calls cost a match. Maximum 25 pence and lines stay open until midnight on Sunday. Hmm. One lucky winner will be picked at random from all the correct answers yeah. and announced at the end of next week's Dear Mr. Barker. Yeah. Uh, as permission from the person who pays the phone bill and, and dial carefully too. Yeah. Mm. Good luck with that. Hey, Mr. Mm -hmm. Barker, we've had a letter here from Philip Kelly, age mm -hmm. seven, from Canterbury in Kent, mm -hmm. and he says, Dear Mr. Barker, please mm -hmm. can you tell me how weather people know what the weather is going to be like? Yeah. Oh, hello, Philip. Uh, good question and nice yeah. weather pictures. And I've got a letter from oh. David Green who's also interested in the weather. So, it's over to you, David. 
I play cricket every weekend and get really fed up when it starts to rain and we have to abandon play. So I'm going to see how the weather is forecast and if it looks like rain. I'm off to meet the BBC's weather forecaster, Helen Young. Hello, David. I understand you want to know how we forecast the weather. Let me show you. I can use my radar pictures here. Where it's blue, that's where it's raining at the moment. And out here to the west, where there's lots of yellows and pinks, that's where it's really heavy rain. We have a look at other things, like satellite pictures. So let's have a look at today's one. This is a, a view from space looking down on Earth, and it picks out where all the cloud is. Now, that's all very well, but you might want to know what's happening at the weekend, so looking a little bit further ahead. Well, for that, I get all this information from the Met Office in Bracknell, and they produce where they think the rain's likely to be. So I have to look at all those things, everything that comes through from the Met Office, all the satellite pictures, all the radar pictures. Yeah. Then I have to, to make it look nice, and I have to make up the charts that I then show you on television. So I start with a, a blank chart of Britain here, and then I have to go and put all the symbols on that I want. Then we put it all together in a little, like a little booklet, really. And each one of these charts is like a separate page. You can see all the charts that I've made up to tell the weather story. And then I go into the studio and do the broadcast, so would you like to join me? OK. And now, with a very special weather forecast for dear Mr Barker, it's over to David Green. Hello, and this is a weather forecast for your, all you sports fans. Excellent weather conditions for skiers in Scotland. Lovely winds off the east coast for sailors. Watch out for the muddy rugby fields in the Midlands. Lovely weather conditions in Cornwall for surfers. And finally, Loads and loads of sun over my cricket field in Beckenshield. That was excellent, David. What a good presenter you are. But look, what's happening over TV centre? It seems to be raining dogs and chickens. Who said weather forecasters can't get it right? How's that, Mr Barker? Raining chickens and dogs? What will they think of next? Well, that's all we've got time for today. Thanks to all our questionnaires for asking such interesting questions. Yes, if we answered your question on today's show, you'll be getting a T-shirt just like this one. <laughs> <laughs> what did she say? Uh, she said, and you could win a talking globe like... Ah! <laughs> uh, good luck if you enter our competition, and here's our address if you want to send us a question. It's Dear Mr Baku. P.O. Box 1545. <laughs> London W12, 60 for dog, B for biscuit. And here's our email address. Dear dot Mr dot Barker at BBC dot co dot UK. See you next time. Bye! Bye. Yay,